do this thing. Welcome everybody. My name is Whitney or Whit. I am a GMAT GRE and EA instructor here at Manhattan Prep. And in tonight's free GMAT Prep Hour, we are uh, working on the second half of a two-part lesson and it stands on its own. So that's okay if you missed our first one. Um, the first half of this lesson, if you are watching the recording, you'll be able to see the link below. I'll make sure that's in the comments. Um, but we are working on a quant session quant section lesson on rates and work. So last time, it's been a little while since that last time, um, but last time we um, kind of laid out like what the big picture was gonna look like. So I'd like to do that again, I'd like to do that again. Um, we are going to be talking about tonight, I wanna reintroduce the kind of fundamental rates and work formulas so that we know how to use those. In our session one, we covered distance, both average speed and objects in motion. And then tonight, we'll look a little bit at the basic work formula again in a slightly more complex uh, scenario than we saw last time. And then we will start to talk about um, work where we have different rates, where we have the same rates. We'll also look at a couple of like advanced situations, both in work. Um, but also we're going to carry one of our lessons from work back into our distance question. So we'll be re-looking at a distance question or two that we saw last time, but we'll be solving them in a slightly different way. Yeah. So let's do this thing. Let's get started. Um, just as a kind of cheat sheet that we're starting to build, um, we built the first half of this last time, but I'd like to have it up to you anyway. So we really have like three major questions in the distance kind of area and three major question types in the work scenario. Um, in both of our situations, we have kind of a simple or fundamental relationship. That would be our single thing working or our single thing traveling. So it's like one vehicle or one person traveling one distance. They leave their home, they go to work, that's it. Um, if it's a work problem, it would be like a single person doing a single job. Now, in both of those situations, we have our fundamental formula. We have a distance equals rate times time and a work equals rate times time. So technically, the actual formula is work. So it's work equals rate times time. And when we're doing distance problems, it's just that the unit of work, if you will, is a unit of distance. It's how far you travel. The work is miles or kilometers or feet, right? Over some unit of time. Cool. So last time when we were together, um, for those of you that were here with me, last time on the distance side of things, we covered the scenario where we have one single thing where it's traveling kind of multiple legs. So think of this as a situation where I leave home and I go to school at one speed. And then I come home that same route at a different speed. And the question asked about what is the average speed? And so for this one, what we came up with was the formula that we take the distance rate time formula, we solve it for rate. And therefore we get this like average rate is a total distance over a total time. And we saw in that lesson as well that often the distances are not given because if they give you the distance, it makes the problem feel a little easier. That said, if they don't give you the distance, you get to make up your own. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if they give you the distance or they don't, we can use smart numbers to invent our own. We also saw what happens when we have two, say vehicles, trains, cars, people, traveling at different rates. And generally speaking, they're either driving towards each other, right? Two trains on opposite ends of a track right? Or they're running away from each other. Or there's the kind of unique situation of the chase where in this chase, we've got one car, truck, train, whatever, chasing and trying to catch up with the other. And what we talked about last time was um, kind of more of a make it real approach. We talked about drawing a picture. We talked about finding their individual rates. You might be setting up sort of a table where you're moving the trains, planes, and automobiles, like little toy cars in a sandbox, um, and then using the answer system. 
we will come back and we will look at how to use something that we'll be doing today as another or maybe algebraic approach to these same two things traveling probably chasing each other or traveling towards or away from each other okay so tonight we're going to finish up our cheat sheets with the work side of things and really in the work side of things we've got the single thing doing its single job and then we have two other scenarios and they involve things working together so the next two scenarios are both about people machines what have you pipes working together. The scenarios are that I can have two things that work together, at two or more things working together, and they're working at different rates. Okay, so building birdhouses at two different rates, and packing boxes at two different rates. And we're going to look at what happens when things work together and when things work against each other. So that's not nearly as common, but this might be the example of um, a friend of mine and I are building sandcastles. And I can build a certain number of sandcastles every hour, and she can kick down a certain number of sandcastles every hour. And I want to know how many sandcastles can I build while she's actively kicking them down. So that would be me and my friends. She's working against me. Right? Um, but then we also have the scenario that tends to be a little frustrating for folks of two or more things working together, but this time they're working at the same rates, okay? One of the cool things about rate problems, I think, is that you will see that the formula that we'll use for all three, so like if you look at the distance family, it sort of feels kind of different for everything. If it's a simple distance, fine, I'll use the simple formula. If it's average rate, that has its own formula. But if it's like, things traveling towards or against, away from each other, I actually am going to use that one most likely. I'll be honest, most often I'll use this kind of like sketch it out approach. The nice thing about work problems is that we're going to do them in the same way for all three, same formula with a little tweak, little tiny tweak. Um, so let's start with the fundamental formula for work just to make sure we're all on the same page. So if the formula is work equals rate times time, let's give this problem a shot. If I can build four birdhouses every three hours, how many birdhouses can I build in nine hours? So give this one a shot. And then let me know, type in the chat window, what do you think? Beautiful. <clears throat> so lots of answers already getting in. Several ways we could solve this. One, the thing that we want to think about a lot, or I like to think about quite a bit, is that a rate is a unit of work over a unit of time. Right, that is our rate. If I'm unsure of that, I can always plug the intro amount if WIT can build four birdhouses every three hours, right? her rate is four thirds. Work equals rate times ten. Then I want to know how many birdhouses does she build four birdhouses per three hours in nine hours. Do some little canceling here. She can do 12 birdhouses. Also though, we can start to look if we know this rate is four birdhouses every three hours. And I am trying to figure out what she can accomplish in nine hours. It is the same proportion. 
So three to nine, which means four goes up to 12. Both of those perfectly acceptable ways of solving. Now, sometimes they give us information in more complicated ways, but it still involves the same single person doing a single job. We might just have to start to think of it broken up into segments. So as we get into story problems, I want you to put yourself in the story, especially when people like start and stop working or they do parts of jobs at different times. I want you to think about like, all right, I might have to separate this day or this period into smaller periods where I apply different logic to each period. So let's try this one, a little bit more like a real problem. So I'm gonna give you a stopwatch. Let's take about two minutes to answer. Pull in when you think you got it. All right, friends, got answers in from most everybody. So a little bit different, um, not quite as straightforward as the last one. So a baker made 60 pies. I always do story problems, by the way. I do a quick check my answer choices. Also do a quick read of the story to make sure I have the whole story before I start uh, putting anything down on my page. Mm -hmm. So we've got 60 pies in the first five hours of my work day. That gives me a bit of a rate. By how many pies per hour did he increase his rate in the last three hours of the work day so he could get 150 pies in the whole period? So let's think about what we know. Okay. So we've got the first five hours and then the later three hours. Let's just catalog. Okay, the work he accomplished was 60 pies in the second three hours, or in those three hours, we have to complete 150 pies for the whole day. So that's going to be 90 pies that are left. Um, I know the time. So the time is my five hours and my three hours. And I don't know the rate, but I can find them. So in this case, work equals rate times time. If work is 60, that equals rate times five. So his rate was 12 pies per hour. 
So now I've got my other work equals rate times time. I've got 90 pi. I don't know this rate. It's a different rate. Uh, this is three hours. So he ended up having to have a rate of 30 pi per hour. The question doesn't ask what his rate was. The question asks, by how many pies per hour did he increase his rate? So we increased from 12 up to 30 for an increase of 18. Beautiful. Yeah. And watch the answers because it's actually a little strange. I didn't put 30 here, but 30 would be a common wrong answer trap here. Yeah, nicely done. Yeah. Okay. So we've got this down. If one thing's working, cool. But let's think about the second scenario, right? So when things work at different rates. So let me ask you, this. if I have a situation where let's say uh, Wit can build five birdhouses every hour. Uh, Alexa can build seven bird houses every hour. Working together, assuming, assuming that we don't interrupt each other or we like don't chit chat and make it worse. Like, so assuming that our rates stay constant, working together, how many bird houses per hour can Wit and Alexa build? What do y'all think? Okay. So now I want y'all to think about the logic of it. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to just think like, okay, if I were in a real store, uh, Wit and Alexa are sitting at the table, and every hour, Wit's making five bird houses. And during that same hour, Alexa's making seven bird houses. What does that mean? It means that together, the five and the seven birdhouses, they're making 12 birdhouses per hour. Okay, what if, new story, I'll use my sandcastles one. I'm not going to pick on poor Alexa for this. I'm going to say the wick can build five sandcastles every hour. Her brother kicks down. If her brother kicks down, um, three bur uh, sand castles, three of her, I see that, every hour, how many, how many of Whitney's sand castles can be built and remain in an hour. Yeah. So I'm making five, my brother's kicking down three. Exactly right, y'all. Two. The net result is two. And so what we've got is when things work together, no matter what the scenario, when things work together, we add their rate. We add the rate. So bird houses per hour, bird houses per hour, that's a rate. Sand castles per hour, rate. So when things work together, we're adding their rate. When things work against each other, we subtract their rate. So let's look at our cheat sheet, if you will. If I know that when things work together, we add rates, and I know that when things work against each other, we subtract rates. 
my formula, my work equals rate times time formula needs to shift slightly. So I'm going to have the same work equals rate times time formula, but I'm now going to add together the individual rates And I'm, that's going to give me, right, the time and the work are going to show up on how much they do together. Right? How much they do together. We're also going to look at an estimation. So if we've got only two actors, we can do a little bit of estimating here, depending on what we know. But let's try to set this up. Okay. So what I'd like is for y'all to, we'll start with add rates. <clears throat> and so then let me grab the formula and I'll put it on the question for us. And we're gonna give one a try. All right, here we go. All right, if you haven't gotten an answer in, definitely do. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so let's set this thing up. 
I know my formula. So generally when I see that what I've got are two or more things working together, but their rates are different. I always write the formula on my page first. So I'd be like W equals R1 plus R2. It's only two things. So um, close parentheses times type. And I might take a minute to figure out what my rates are. So the rate of a standard machine is, if I want to remind myself, uh, if work equals rate times time, then a rate is always a unit of work over an amount of time. So it's one gallon every four minutes. The rate of the deluxe machine is twice that. So it's two times that number. So it's two gallons every four minutes or it's one gallon every two minutes. Either way, I'm gonna leave it as two gallons every four minutes because I have to add these two together. So their rate together right, is gonna be that stop. So I'm gonna try and fill this in. I wanna know how long, that's my time, will it take the two machines working together to do the work, 135 equals their rate, one fourth plus two fourths times time. That's the thing I'm solving. So 135 equals three fourths times T. I'm going to, uh, again, these are minutes, right? So we're about to get this whole thing in minutes. And so what I might do is, so I'm gonna go ahead and multiply both sides by four over three. And then I know that if I add five plus three plus one, that's nine. So this is definitely divisible by three. So the closest multiples of three I know would be 120 plus 15. So that over three, I'm gonna cancel this three with it. So three goes into 120 40 times, three goes into 15 five times. And so this is going to be four times 45. Now, before you go multiplying this all the way out, I wanna know the hours. And so if I think about 45 minute windows, two 45 minute windows, is an hour and a half, right? From minutes to hours. And so my correct answer is in fact three. Beautiful. Okay. Thoughts? How do we feel? Scale of one to five, where five is the most confident, one is the least confident. How did that one feel? Okay, nice. I'll take a 4.5, that's pretty cool. Cool. All right, so then let's try another. We'll kind of process through it a little bit faster this time. I'll hold us to the like two-ish minute mark. I'll give you the formula one more time before I take it away. There you go.
All right. Got a lot of answers in. So it seems like maybe this one went pretty well. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to put the two together. So I want to build a birdhouse. That means that my work is one. Their rates are one birdhouse in 15 hours plus one birdhouse in 10 hours. And I want to know how long it's going to take. I find a common denominator here. And so I will put both of these over 30. This is two plus three. So one equals five over 30t or one sixth or six. Beautiful, right? So when we're working together, we can add our rates. Okay, let's look at a slight twist on this. Okay, kind of a little messy. Well, let's see, let's give this one a shot. Okay, if you have not sent me your answer yet, thoughts on this one? Definitely got weirder, got more complicated. Okay. So what's going on? What's different about this problem from the last one? What do you notice that's different this time around? Totally. Absolutely. So instead of things working together, we're going in opposite directions. Exactly. Exactly. We're working in opposite directions. So we're still going to do the same formula. Work equals... This time, we're going to subtract our rates. We're going to subtract off whoever is hurting us. 
So my goal is to fill a pool, one whole pool. And we're doing this in hours, it would appear, fractions of an hour. And so I've got one of my pipes that can fill one pool in one hour. And we're subtracting off <clears throat> the drain that empties one pool in 1.5 hours, or let's call that three half. Let's stay in fraction. And I wonder how long it's going to take. So I've got one minus reciprocal, two thirds. So one equals one third T or three hours. So it's actually not any more complicated. It's just that we have to remember a subtraction. Got to remember subtraction. Okay, one more in this same family because I'd like to show you um, kind of like a scenario where we run into maybe some uglier math. And we want to look for some alternatives. So let's get going on this one. I don't want to give you, I don't really need you to finish it. What I want you to do is type to me privately. As soon as you hit a part of the problem where you're like, ugh, this seems so messy. So messy. Uh All right, so what is it about this problem that's particularly not awesome? Because I had folks spend a long time. So if we want to build a tank, the algebra here is one tank, their combined rate, and time. Yeah, I got to add an eighth and a 15th. Those are not lovely. That is really terrible to calculate. Really ter terrible to calculate. So here's the deal. Look at your answer choices. What do you notice about those answer choices? They're so spread out. They're so spread out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a step back from this algebra for a second. Because the answer choices are so spread out. In a rate of work problem, we're going to use an estimation technique. The way this technique works is as follows. Okay, so let's think about both people. I've got Sabrina. If I have one Sabrina doing the job, it would take eight hours. What would happen if I doubled her? I gave myself two Sabrinas. I, closed, I cloned her. 
How long would it take? Yeah, exactly. It would take four hours, right? We can use kind of the logic. All right. If I had one Janus, it would take 13 hours. And by the same logic, if I cloned her, it would take like six and a half hours. But I don't have two Sabrinas and I don't have two Janices. I've only got one of each. Which means the actual value has to be somewhere between four and six and a half hours. And if you find the actual midpoint, we don't need to for this one, but if you had a couple of answers in there, if you find the midpoint, it'll be slightly closer to your faster person. So it'll always be a little bit closer to your faster person. <clears throat> and so I know it's gotta be between four and six and a half. So the only answer is D. Yeah, of course, this can be super helpful. Now notice if we went back to our Miguel um, and Wendy, we could still do it, right? One Wendy is 15, two Wendy's is a uh, 7.5. One Miguel is 10. Two Miguel's would be five. So my answer has to be somewhere between five and 7.5. And it's going to be a little closer to my faster person. And so once again, so anytime we have two people or two things working together, um, and it's kind of a more straightforward single job, <clears throat> we can often use this estimation test. It's a little trickier with this 135 because we'd have to look at like how long did it take the standard machine to do 135? How long? There'd be a lot more math to it. But if it's just a simple two people combined work, uh, we can ask. Okay. So then let's look at our last scenario <clears throat> in the work area. If we have two things, two or more things, usually it's a lot of things. So we've got two or more things. They're working together, but this time they all have the same rate. We need to think a minute about what that looks like. If everything has the same rate, and they're all working together, this repetitive addition is the same as multiplication. So we're going to use the exact same formula. However, this time, instead of adding a bunch of rates, I like to use kind of a hashtag. We're going to use the number of workers times rate. This time, we don't necessarily have to block it off in parentheses because everything's being multiplied. And once again, the work and the time are their rate or are the work and the time together? The rate this time, this is kind of a, is individual. So I have a, a new variable that gets incorporated for the number of those identical workers. Also for this scenario, we often end up needing to use the formula <clears throat> kind of repeatedly. So we end up using it a couple of times. So let's try one. Um, I really like this problem. So go ahead and poke around it. I'll give you up to about three minutes.
All right. You have not given me an answer yet. <clears throat> so generally speaking, these set up best with two equations. It'll be the same equation, but twice. We have the initial condition and then the desired condition. Um, so I always sort of, you know, originally or what they give me, I'll put my work equals number, rate, time, and then I'll fill stuff in as I go. So nine machines, same rate, 27 jerseys, four minutes. So my rate, I don't ever multiply these things out yet. I always sort of cancel them first, nine times four. Now I'll cancel it, nine goes into 27 three times. So my rate is three jerseys every four months. <clears throat> now my uh, desired condition, what the question wants, how many minutes. So again, work equals number, three time, how many minutes would it take four machines at a rate of three fourths to do 60 jerseys, my four is cancel, 3t is 60, and therefore t is 20, 20 minutes. Okay, so I, this type of problem often messes with people kind of a lot. I watch a lot of people not know how to set it up. So we're gonna give it another go. Then we'll look at uh, kind of a little bit of how to add some of this information that uh, working together to our distance wait time from last time and then we'll call it a night. So here you go. Give this one a shot. All right. Seems like this one's going a lot better. Got lots of answers in. So scale of zero to five or one to five, let's say one being the worst and five being the, the most comfortable. How we feel? With lots and lots of things working together. So our original work equals number of people rate time. And I'll do that for my you know new scenario. Work equals number initial space. Number of people rate time. So 12 workers uh, do 60 boxes in nine minutes. 
So the rate over here is 60 over 12 by 9. 12 goes into 65 times. So this rate is 5 over 9. I'm going to put it in over here, 5 over 9. I want to know how long. 27 workers. Oops, excuse me. 27 workers. 180 bucks. Well, 9 and 27 cancel. So I've got 180 equals uh, 15 T. So T is 180 over 15. I know that these are both divisible by 3. So that would be 60 over 5. Which, if I double both of those, I get a denominator of 10. And so my answer is 12. If you like any of the like shorthand um, tricks of computation that I've been using tonight, make sure you sign up for our free um, Foundations of GMAT Math workshops. We have two of them, two five-hour workshops. So the last thing I want to put together is this idea of people working together right, and working against each other um, as a rate issue. And so we talked about last time this idea of things working um, together. And so when people work together or against each other, we can use this same idea that distance is equal to their two rates times time. So this is what we would use if people are traveling towards each other or if people are traveling away from each other because they are working together to cover a full distance. So in this story, two people, person A and person B are 14 miles apart. Person A is traveling at three miles per hour. Person B is traveling at four miles per hour. How long is it going to take for them to meet? Well, they're trying to cover 14 miles at a combined rate of seven. T is going to be two. Turns out that we can do a very similar thing when two like people or um, things are, are chasing each other. Uh, so if we have a situation like the following, car A is 12 miles behind car B. If car A is traveling at 60 miles, per hour and car B is traveling at 50 miles per hour, how long will it take car A to catch up to car B and get eight miles ahead? when we have a chase situation going on, and what we want is car, in this case, we need car A to make up this 12 miles and these eight miles we can certainly do what we did in the previous lesson, which is move our little Tonka trucks through space. But we can also say that we are trying to cover a distance, car A is trying to cover a distance of, in this case, 12 plus eight miles. The 12 miles is behind and the eight miles it needs to catch up at a rate 
of 60 minus 50, right? Because if my car B would just stop, car A would be able to catch them so much faster. But because car B keeps going, they are hurting car A. So we have two cars working against each other in the chase. And so that times time. So I want to know how long is it going to take car A to catch up that 20 miles when the combined rate or basically the amount of work that car A is able to accomplish is only 10 miles per hour because we have to subtract off the work that car B is taking. And so we end up with two hours. So if we put that back into our cheat sheet, a second thing we can do, so we've got option one, we also have option two, where what we can do is if they are driving towards or away, add the rate. If, however, we're in the world of the chase, subtract the rate and do the same thing. So nicely done, y'all. So nicely done. I'm going to throw you one just because we had a little bit of a late start. I'm going to throw you one kind of weird problem. See how you figure out to put it together, and we'll call it a day. Enjoy. Nice, y'all. <clears throat> so we've got three actors. That might mean that we're going to add all three together. It might not. I have their rate, um, Alejandro's rate. 
is one dog housed in four hours. Betty's race is one dog housed in three hours. There's going to be a Carrie's race. And it says if Betty and Carrie working together, so their race together, the rate of Betty plus the rate of Carrie, they can build a doghouse twice as fast as Alejandro can. So their rate together is twice his rate. So I'll plug in what I know. One third plus Carrie's rate is two times one fourth. So rate of carry is a half minus a third, which is three minus two over six. So carry's rate is one sixth. The question says, how many hours would it take carry working alone to build a doghouse? Well, a rate is one. Doghouse every six hours. It would take her six. Y'all, nicely done. So good. Oh my gosh. Seriously, so good, y'all. So, as a friendly reminder, I know you're sitting in here, so you know where many of our free items are located. Good. Um, but in case you haven't been in a while, go check out all of our free study resources. We've got those on our manhattanprep.com, front slash GMAP, front slash classes, and then free. Okay, so you can try any of our um, full course session ones. You can always try those for free. Come hang out with us in more free prep hours. We'd love to see. Otherwise, have a lovely rest of the evening, y'all. Take care, and we'll see you soon.